Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here and welcome to another episode of Aaron's Art Tips. Okay, so today I got something really cool. It's a very simple kind of fun thing to do in Photoshop and I'm going to show it to you. Um, recently I've gotten into uh, going out and diving. I live, um, I live on the beach here in Florida, uh, in Stewart, Florida, and I'm a very lucky guy because right out in my backyard, right over here, if I could turn the camera around, you could see I've got a big reef right out there and I love to go diving. And lately I've been going out and photographing a lot of fish and, and, uh, and turtles and that sort of thing under the water. And I'm starting to do some paintings. I want to do some big oils and that sort of thing. But I'm starting out doing some uh, digital paintings. And uh, I want to show you a little technique in creating like schools of fish. But you can apply this to creating crowds. Um, anything where there's a big number of things that you need to reproduce. Um, and so let's just start with the fish. So this is a fish uh, right here. You can see I've created this fish just sitting on a, <coughs> excuse me, on a blue background. This is called a look down fish. It's a pretty common fish that we have here in Florida. You can find them on the reefs and out in open water. Uh, they're really neat looking fish. Very, very silvery. They pick up the, a lot of the background uh, reflections and that sort of thing. Um, this one I did from, a, a, from some reference. I shot a, a photo. I'm going to pull that over real quick and show you. This is, um, this is a photo that I shot out on the reef behind my house. And I really like this photo. And they tend to swim in schools. But I got this one image that I thought was really good. And, uh, and so I did this little painting right here of just the one fish. And um, as I was painting it, I created a lot of layers and getting the, the painting done. But then I compressed all the layers together into one. And if you look over on the right, you can see it says layer eight and it's all on one layer. If I turn it off up, oh, here we go. There we go there. Turn it off, turn it on. You can see it. And the other thing I can do is I can move the fish around. OK. So let's create a school of fish now. First of all, the, creating the school is easy. Now, what I'm going to teach you is how to kind of cre create some depth within the school and kind of make it feel like it's not the same fish rubber stamped all over the place. But that's what we're going to do. We're just going to kind of repeat, repeat that same fish. So let's take, this is very simple. Let's take layer eight that we've created and just drag it down. And there's a little, there's a little folder right, right next to the trash right here. Just go ahead and drop it down to there. And all of a sudden we've got another fish. And if I grab my move tool up here on the upper left, I can take it and oh, there we go. There's another fish. Now, I want to, let's do this. I'm going to take this fish here, the original, and put him on top. There we go. Because I want him to be the dominant fish. And let's, I'm going to free transform it, which means I'm going to make it a little bigger because I want him closer. There we go. That's actually I'm going to make I'm going to make because of the composition. I want some I want a nice some nice open area. So let's do this. Hit return. Now I'm going to grab this fish and let's make him smaller. There we go. Now, the the key here is I'm going to change his position a little bit, change his size. Good. Let's do that. Now I'm going to create another one. Let's put him underneath. And watch this. Here we go. Whoop. He just keeps appearing out of some out of nowhere. And uh, let's free transform. Make him a little smaller. And I look for little things like this. Watch. I want to make sure that the composition is pleasing. So when I see something like this, where this tail is sticking out of the back, it's a little confusing. So I want, I want to do things that there now I'm creating some open space 
and that's a little easier to look at. All right. Now let's make another one. See, I'm just all I'm doing is just repeating fish. Put that underneath. Let's drag. Oh, there is another one. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to free trans. Oops, wrong one. Let's do this. There we go. Free transform. Make him a little smaller. And you see what I'm doing? I keep re reusing the last one I just did. So I'm making it smaller, smaller, smaller progressively. So like the fish I just created there, I'm going to repeat that. Put it underneath. Drag it from over here. Edit, free transform, make him a little smaller. Let's put him down here because it's getting, oh, uh, this is where it gets kind of fun where you can just, there, there we go. I kind of like that. We're getting some nice negative space. I kind of, I try to watch out for tangents where you, you get these awkward places where the, the silhouette kind of touches. You got that. All right. And let's do him again. I'm going to, I think this time I'm just going to keep him the same size. And let's just move it around a few times. There we go. Copy it again. Move him around. There we go. Let's get one out front. Let's see how that looks. Copy it again. We'll get one out here, breaking that, breaking that line. I felt like we're getting a little too much of a line there. Now look at this. The school is getting kind of neat. Let's copy it again. And let's drag one over here. So I want to, whoops, there we go. I want to fill up this, this space a little bit more. But I don't, I don't want to draw a whole lot of attention there, so I'm going to hide the eye. That's kind of cool. Try it again. Let's put one up here. I'm kind of digging this. This is kind of looking neat. Let's take our top one. Let's try this. I'm going to try copying it again. Free transform. I'm kind of thinking I might make this guy more dominant. Put him down here. Well, that's kind of interesting. Let's move that up right in here. Um, let's try putting him down. There. That feels pretty good. So look at this. In just a matter of minutes, we've created a school. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, there's no atmosphere to it. Even under, you know, in, in, up in the above the water, we have atmosphere. As things get further away, the value structure gets closer and closer together. The darks aren't quite as dark and the lights aren't quite as light. And as things, because of all the particulate and, and water vapor and all kinds of things in the air, it tends to, to as the things get further and further away, things the, the value structure gets closer and closer to the middle. And that's what we call atmospheric uh, perspective. It's the same thing underwater. There's stuff in the water that as things get further and further away, they tend to get... Uh, they, their values tend to come together. And so that's what we want to create that illusion uh, here. So starting at the top, we're going to start creating layers in between some of these fish. Okay. So right here, I'm going to create a layer between the top layer and the second one down like that. You see that on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to grab that watercolor, the color right there. And I'm going to make it a little warmer thinking of it as a little bit of sunlight mixing with the blue of the water. It's going to get kind of a green turquoise-ish tint. Make it a little lighter. Now watch. I'm going to uh, go touch on my bucket tool right here. And I'm going to fill it. Oh my gosh. What happened? <laughs> well, watch. Now that I've got this filled, now I come over to the right and see where it says opacity up here? I'm going to knock that opacity down and bring it way down 
bring it way down. I'm going to bring it down to about 20%. Now look, so the fish behind are slightly lighter than the fish in the front. And that's what we're going to do progressively working back. And you're going to see some depth start to happen. So let's go. I'm going to go uh, one more fish. Let's put another layer there. I'm going to now I'm going to I'm going to grab just a little bit of the color of the water. I'm going to fill it. Now watch. So now with the fish behind our original in the front, he's a little bit lighter, but now we've got a layer behind him. We're going to go back over to that layer and we're going to lighten it back to 20%. And what's cool about this is that as as we build up the layers, that 20% builds on 20%, builds on 20%. And those those fish, as they progressively get further and further away, are going to get lighter and lighter. And it's and then you'll create depth in your composition. So let's go. Uh, let's drop it. Let's go to a couple fish now down. And I'm going to create a layer right here. Let's go over to our bucket tool, our fill tool, and fill it. Okay. Now as you see, there's two fish left there. Once again, let's drop it down to about 20%. There we go. And you can see those fish are progressively getting lighter and further back and further back and further back. Let's do a couple more fish. Grab our bucket tool, fill. Now let's drop that down. I'm going to make it a little bit more than 20 because I want to I want to really kind of build up that that perspective now. And I'm going to go just, let's see, let's go three fish down, add a layer, fill. Now you'll see I can make just faintly, just faintly have a couple of those fish sticking out there in the background. Now look, see that? Now we've created all these fish and they feel like they're receding back we've got depth because we've created this at these planes of atmosphere this plane of depth working back consistently working back and creating this school of fish and we've done it in a matter of you know just minutes it's a, it's very very cool now let's go ahead and, and add um, it, it's kind of smooth and, and I want to see some sunlight and that sort of thing so I'm gonna go ahead Let's do this. I'm going to create a layer on top. Whoops. Let's create a layer on top right here. There we go. I'm going to set that to color dodge. I'm going to knock the opacity way down. I'm going to, I'm, this is just an experiment. I want to see what's going to happen. Let's get some nice warm yellow light. And I'm going to grab my hold down that bucket tool and go to the gradient tool. Now watch, I'm just going to come down. I want that light direction to kind of go this way. And I'm, what I'm doing is creating a little bit of light over these guys. There we go. It's getting a little lighter down there. And then down here, on the very bottom, I'm going to create another layer. Grab that water color, that, that grab the water, start with that color, and I'm going to go dark with it. Once again, I've got my gradient tool, and I'm going to come up. There. Just slightly darken it so it gets a little lighter up on the top. All right. Very good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. There we go. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to save this. There, make sure you save it. Now, I'm going to flatten it. All right. So, we've got nice flattened image. And one thing I'm going to try, I've got a, in my collection, I've got a very cool kind of textured brush that I like to use. I'm going to really make it kind of big. Yeah, like that. I'll make it about 1,200 pixels. There we go. 
and I'm going to I'm going to repeat that background. I'm going to drop the opacity way down to like 10%. Come to my color dodge tool. Set that to nice warm light. Now watch what I'm going to do. Just creating, uh, I want it even less strong than that. I'm going to create these little streaks of light coming through the water. And because this brush is textured, I get this nice kind of feel like it's there's stuff in the water. And I'll lighten that so the one underneath shows through because I'm not liking what I don't like is how some of these fish in the background are disappearing. Okay, now I'm going to I'm going to uh, merge those two together. I'm going to create a couple of new layers. So I, I always leave my background layer as my base. Now watch what I'm going to do. I want to create some light patterns on these fish. Now this is where I make it feel so like it's not so rubber stamped. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to, well, I'm just going to keep the same brush I had, but I'm going to make it small. Let's make it about 74, maybe 85 pixels. There we go. And I'm going to keep it on color dodge. Now watch. I'm going to strengthen that a little bit. Uh, make it more like 12%. And I'm going to create, looking at my reference, little light patterns going across the fish. Make that a little smaller. Actually, I'm going to grab uh, any of you that use photo that have the latest Photoshop. You'll have erodible brushes. They look like um, little pencil tips. And so this one right here, I'm going to grab because these will work too. I'm just going to create. Yeah, that works a little better. Now I'm creating these great light patterns using my color dodge tool. Lightly doing it on different fish very quickly. And I'll work back and forth. following the contours of the fish. See that? You can see the light coming right off of him there. And there might be a little bit of light coming through his fins here. Let's do the same thing up here. But I'm not repeating the same patterns. I'm doing a different pattern on every fish. So it feels like we've got different fish everywhere. Now you got to be sure, because this is all flattened now, that you don't, on the ones as, as they recede further and further into the background, you got to make sure that they don't, you don't go too light on them because then it'll, it'll start pulling them forward. You got to remember to keep those values close together. See, I'm doing very quickly on some of these fish back here. There. See that? Look at that. It's bit of, got a nice big one here. I'll jump back and forth. Now remember, we just started this all just from this one fish and just started repeating it. And this works really well to do, uh, you know, comps with, like, you know, say I want to do this as a big oil painting. Well, I just worked out a nice comp, and now I would use this as my base. And, uh, here we go. And, um, and then I could draw each one by hand, and, you know, on the canvas and make them all individual. But at least as a comp, I can repeat them and get through it fairly quickly. I'm going to bring this down here a little bit. Let's blow it up. Once again, being sure not to go too bright because I don't want to, I don't want to mess up that atmosphere illusion, that underwater atmosphere. See how quickly I'm going? I'm keeping this very quick. Now, I didn't look at the start time, but it feels like we've been at it for maybe about 20 minutes. But look how fast we've created this painting 
of a school of look down just starting with the one we've got all the atmosphere look at that see how cool that is all of a sudden we've got a school of fish it's very very cool and I'm going to I'm going to do one more thing I'm going to grab that go a little warmer and brighter keep our little brush and let's just go in create a layer on top whoops I gotta go back and make that normal there we go go to normal now watch I'm just creating stuff in the water just stuff some textured stuff in the water there now just by repeating layers and uh, uh, placing them compositionally in pleasing places let's put a couple over the tops of them because uh, you know they'd be fl swimming through different floating things you know when you're out there even in clear water there's a lot of things floating out on the reef I'm just quickly laying that in. Oops. There we go. There we go. Swimming through. There we go. And here we got a whole school of look downs. Now the, the light and dark is feeling a little even for me. So I'm going to create a layer on top. I'm going to add go to multiply set that to multiply and I want to get a nice blue kind of dark and go back to my and this is once again just an experiment that's why I put it on a new layer and I'm gonna grab that textured brush that I've got this that custom brush that I have I'm gonna set that that opacity down low I go a little bigger with it let's do this go a little lighter I'm going to make it about a thousand pixels. Whoops, I just did a hundred. That's not what I want. Let's do a thousand. Now I set it to multiply because I want it to feel like some shadows coming through the water. There's a few shadows here and there. I'm just going to paint around this guy a little bit. This guy's got a little bit on him. Go a little darker underneath him. Get him to pop a little better. Like so. So I'm going to put that under the stuff that's floating in the water. There we go. Now watch what I do. I know it looks kind of weird right now. I'm going to go to Filter blur and I'm going to go to my motion blur and I'm going to try to match the direction and I'm going to really knock it up really far to get it very very streaky see all the little streaks I've got in here very very streaky there we go now it, it's created this kind of cool shimmery feel to it I kind of like that there we go and now, so now our guy down below here is kind of sticking out a little better let's go ahead and save this I'm gonna save it as our look down but combined there we go now I'm gonna mer oops I'm gonna redo that I'm gonna merge I'm going to flatten the image and one more time I want to go in and I want to color dodge a little bit just to get I still want to draw a little bit more attention to our foreground guy I want him to be our main our main area of attention so I'm going to grab a nice airbrush shape and I'm gonna yeah somewhere in there go back to color dodge Knock that opacity way down, 7%, whoops, uh, yeah, 8% is fine. 
And I'm just going to hit this. Watch what happens. Look how I'm brightening him up like he's he's in the light. I want to get some brightness on his eye. Hit a little bit there. Maybe a little on this guy. Maybe lighten up a little bit of these streaks. look at that so we've got this school of fish that we created just using a repetition of, of that layer that that fish layer progressively making them smaller and adding that atmosphere between fish and you can have a lot of fun doing this kind of thing and now remember you can do it let me move that brush out of the way you can uh, you can do it with crowds. You can do it with all kinds of things. So go out and experiment with it and have some fun. And um, the next time I, I'll see you next week and uh, I'll have something new. I think I'll do something with animation next week. But until then, I hope you learned something. Go out and give it a shot and I'll talk to you then. Bye.